Let's find the critical numbers first for this problem. To find critical numbers, you take the derivative and wonderfully product rule. Derivative of a sine is cosine, leave cosine, plus leave sine, derive cosine, Now, do you understand we're going to be setting this equal to zero? That is a double angle formula. I was going to use a double angle formula, but I just thought of something. Let's try a different route. And let's just let's see, let's see which one's better for you. Could I add this over? Hope I don't mess myself up with this. Could I square root both sides? And then could you use your brain and think when is sine equal to cosine? When does sine equal to cosine on this interval? Isn't that pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4? Does 3 pi over 4 equal the same? No, one's negative, one's positive. So is x going to be pi over 4. Is that okay? Oh, but there's a problem here. If we square root both sides, isn't there a plus or minus involved? But just think about the plus or minus idea. When you square root both sides, isn't there a plus or minus kind of involved? Do you follow me? So isn't this really possibly one of these a plus or minus? So does that also then also include that? Got it? When we square root of both sides, we have to remember there's a plus or minus somewhere. Thus, we can't just ignore that because it doesn't matter one of them. It could, if they're different, the same value but positive negative differences, 3 pi over 4 does included, is included. Got it? The other method, just real quick, would have been this right here is sine 2x. Wait, no. It's cosine 2x. You could have said cosine 2x equal to 0 and solved that. You would have got these two. Okay. That's A. Critical numbers. What do we do with the critical numbers if we want to find where it's increasing or decreasing? We make a table. We have two points of importance, two critical points. And from this one, it's going to be from 0 to pi over 4, and from pi over 4 to 3 pi over 4, and then from 3 pi over 4 to pi. It's OK. Switching to interval notation instead of the other one. Doesn't matter what you use. But I, I need this at the top so I know the intervals. Got it? You have to define the intervals we're dealing with. Now, these are critical numbers, meaning they're the only hills or valleys on the graph. So all I got to do is choose something here and plug it into what? The derivative. So. What would be a good one in this interval? Pi over 3? So we got cosine squared pi over 3 minus sine squared pi over 3. Is pi over 3 in the interval? No. Is that bad? Pi over 3 is not in the interval. Let's try 6. That was dumb. OK. Thank you for catching me. Pi over 6 is in the interval. Got it? Now, do we have to worry about all this? Because all we care about is the output positive or negative, correct? Cosine. Let's do a little unit circle real quick. Ooh. Isn't it right here? Are we dealing with this one right here? Which is bigger? 
The cosine or the sine? Isn't cosine bigger? So isn't this going to be the bigger value? Minus the smaller value? Which doesn't that mean it's going to be positive? Does that make it a lot easier? It's a beautiful if you start using just not doing the whole math, but just thinking about the numbers as, is it positive or negative? It's so nice thinking of just positive or negative. Okay, in this interval, am I dumb or is pi over two work? I think pi over two works. Pi over two is easy, it's this one right here. So cosine is zero. And this is 1 squared, which is 1, which is negative. Will they always change from positive to negative? No. No. Remember, those are where there's no point of, inf where there's no um, max or min. We kind of talked about it earlier. And then this one, we want this little value right here, which would be, uh, oh shoot, 6, 5 pi over 6. So you're going to plug in... Um, uh, 5 pi over 6 minus sine squared 5 pi over 6. You do that, and you end up with, uh, which one's going to be bigger? Well, the cosine's going to be bigger, but it's going to be negative, right? But what's the squared going to do that? Make it positive? So would the cosine be bigger and this be smaller again? So would this still be a positive? Cosine, again, has a longer length. Sine has a smaller length. It kind of helps to draw the little visual of a unit circle. So, technically, write the word increasing, or abbreviate it, decreasing, increasing. And then lastly, we want these coordinates. This is pi over 4. This is 3 pi over 4. And let's just think, is it a max or a min? Positive to negative. Is that positive or negative? Positive to negative? So is this a max? Is it absolute or relative? It's relative, but could it be absolute? Yes, but we don't have enough info. And then this one looks like it's going to be decreasing to increasing. So this one's a min. Don't make the cardinal mistake finding the y value. OK? Because <laughs> if you plug it in the derivative, it's going to be 0. And you, if you plug it in the original, ugh, what are you going to get? What? It's just square root 2 minus square root 2. One. Is it going to be 1? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, pi over 4. Uh, I was thinking pi over 6. I was like, oh, no. Is it one? Wait. Is it one half or one? One half. It's the square root of two over two divided by the square root of two over two. Thank you. Multiply by the square root of two over two, which isn't that? One, one fourth? One half. Right, it's one half. And this one's the same thing. Would be negative one half. Thank you. Yeah, you're going to multiply when you plug in um, pi over four to both of these. You got square root two over two, square root two over two. That's square root four over two over four, which is two fourths, which is one half. Thank you guys. So min, max. This is decreasing, increasing, increasing. Those are the intervals. Critical numbers help you find your table. That's the process.